Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, welcome all of you. Uh, as you know that this uh, session is regarding introduction to data analytics and visualization. My name is Amir Ali Ansari and I'm representing Alpha Datum over here. And uh, just quickly, uh, the session outline, what we are going to cover in this uh, session, we are going to cover basic concepts of data analysis and visualization and introduction to uh, Power BI and all its related features. So this is the uh, quick agenda of today's session and we are uh, going to cover a lot many things. So uh, tuned uh, to this uh, session, my short introduction. My name is Amir Ali Ansari and I'm Microsoft Certified and BI Reporting. And I'm head of data division in Alpha Datum as well as uh, Treehouse. And I'm running my blog as easypowerbi.com and my YouTube channel is also Easy Power BI. So if you want some more content, so you can refer these blogs and my YouTube uh, channel as well. So quickly to the topic, data visualization, like whenever we are looking at data in normal textual form, it's very difficult to find relationship and analyze uh, data or understand what this data is telling you. So whenever you place your data in visual context, it's very easy to understand like what this data is trying to explain. Sometimes you use colors, sometimes you use uh, lines and charts and graphs. So there are so many ways like patterns and trends and correlations which help you understand that data quickly. So the data visualization is the basic component of your actual uh, BI journey. Like whenever you start your BI journey, you start your journey from the data visualization. So it's a very important part of your uh, BI or business intelligence journey. So whenever you uh, create different visualization, you group them together. So when you, whenever you are grouping all those visualizations uh, together, there are two basic forms of consolidation. Like either you create a report or you create a dashboard. So the major difference between report and dashboard is like, whenever you are creating a report, it is a kind of a detailed information. Whenever you want to do a kind of a detailed analysis. analysis. So definitely in that case, you will be developing a report in which there will be more visuals, more detailed visuals. So you can investigate, drill through, drill down, tool tips. There are so many features involved. But once you are talking about dashboard, dashboards are those uh, kind of a report which are uh, which requires very short attention span. Like you want to see those dashboards for a couple of seconds. Just like for example, if you are driving your car and if you while driving you see your dash car dashboard for only a few seconds, like one second or two seconds, and you grab everything that dashboard is telling you. So once you start your professional journey and somebody asks you to create a report or a dashboard, then you have to think about it. Like whenever you are creating a report, you have to have more content in that particular report. But once you are creating a dashboard, it should be a summarize or a bird eye view or a, a high level view of uh, your data. And then you can investigate further through reports. So just to understand all these things, what we have just discuss like visuals reports and dashboards so visuals are independent elements and these independent elements you group them together to form a report like in this case we have two reports one report is for hr and one report is for the crm or customer relationship management and both are having different kind of visuals telling different data story but for a dashboard an organization and or the, uh, the decision makers, if they want to see the consolidated dashboard for every department, they are going to create a dashboard and they'll pick and choose certain visual from each report and they will consolidate those into a dashboard. So this is the best use case to understand like how dashboards are created. You create ind independent reports with different visuals and then for a dashboard, for a consolidated view, for your whole organization, for your whole business, you create a dashboard and you pick and choose certain visuals and then you place those visuals in your dashboard. So for all this, what, whatever you are doing uh, in terms of reports and dashboard, they are contributing into your data analytics and business intelligence. So whenever in an organization you want uh, to take informed decisions, you have to analyze your data correctly. You have to visualize your data correctly. And then on the basis of that, you can take informed decisions. So in this case, this is very important 
to understand like what these visuals are what reports are what uh, what 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 is the, what is meant by dashboard so once you are planning your bi journey you should be 100% clear like what you are trying to achieve and uh, which element is meant for which reasons so whenever you are working um, on bi you need a tool a, a software to uh, uh, help you in your whole journey so there are so many uh, products available in the market but um, we prefer uh, as an alpha datum we prefer uh, microsoft power bi because power bi is uh, unique because it covers the whole journey from the data collection to uh, presenting that data uh, it covers almost every aspect uh, of this journey of business analytics solution so from data to connectivity to visualize to analyze to share inside and embed in your websites or other areas or um, uh, different applications power bi is actually giving you a one window solution and once you want to start your journey uh, there is a link uh, mentioned on this slide you can simply download for free and you can start exploring power bi for free and understand and visualize your data on your desktop free of charge and then once you start sharing it then you need an online account to share that particular content online so you can start your journey straight away so after this course you can quickly download it and uh, the recording available for this course you can go through it and you can analyze and you can create your reports quickly so just quickly uh, more about power bi like uh, the power bi desktop is a application where you design and develop your uh, power bi reports and power bi mobile is actually a kind of a, a app mobile app which is available on uh, app stores so once you publish those reports to cloud or uh, uh, online report on premises reporting server so you can view those reports in power bi mobile power bi mobile is not meant for uh, developing your reports but it's meant for viewing only and whenever you want to uh, connect your local data uh, to cloud, you need Power BI on-premises data gateway. And there are other products available, which are uh, Power BI report server and Power BI report. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, the, the element which we are going to concentrate today is the Power BI desktop, and we are going to develop our reports on Power BI desktop only. So quickly, the, whenever you are creating uh, your reports or dashboards, you need some kind of data to work on. So we call it data source. Uh, from different sources, we are going to collect data, whether it's uh, Excel or SQL Server or Oracle or PDF. So, Power BI comes with uh, data connectors. There are huge uh, number of data connectors for all available uh, data sources, data types, which are available in the, in, uh, from where you can pull your data. And by using uh, those connectors, you can bring that data to Power BI and then you can analyze that particular data. So uh, one uh, kind of data you can consider like your business data. And another is the open data where you can find like uh, like uh, like New Jersey's open data, New York's open data, and the Kaggle. So these kind of data you want to analyze market situation. You want to analyze your um, uh, market segment. So there are certain data sets available to analyze, and you can club that, those data sets with your internal uh, data, and then you can uh, bring out value from them. So this is what we are going to uh, cover in this uh, uh, course. So uh, in this demo, which we are starting right now on Power BI, we are going to cover everything from the data uh, to data sources till the final, like once you start sharing your information with your peers, your colleagues, your business um, uh, partners and others. So this is a very important section. So you have to follow it um, properly. So I'm uh, opening Power BI. So I have already downloaded Power BI and I have um, uh, created a file right now. So uh, just for convenience, uh, I have uh, placed it, um, uh, the content over here. So can you see my Power BI sc uh, screen right now? Um, I still see the, the demo, the okay. PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint, I'll just uh, change it too. 
نمیشه There we go. Okay. Now, this is a Power BI um, interface. So before we go forward, we'll understand like uh, what kind of interface Power BI has. So because all of us are familiar with uh, Microsoft Office, so uh, Microsoft has done a very good job in arranging elements almost similar to MS Office. So what is happening like once um, you open a Power BI, you will see that the ribbon style is almost similar, similar to other Microsoft products. So and on the top, you have these menu and other areas which are similar to MS Office products. So we start with the first one, which is get data. Get data is whenever, as I said before, like whenever you want to bring data into your system, you will uh, use uh, get data. And then you have all those data sources, popular data sources, which are available. And if you want to uh, connect with your legacy systems or your business systems, which are available in your organization, then you have a bunch of connectors uh, uh, with the help of which you can easy, easily connect to any uh, data which, is, which resides within your organization. So if you see over here, so th there are so many uh, other data um, uh, sources available, like you have SQL Server, you have SharePoint, you have Postgres, Sybase, SAP, you name it, there are built-in connectors available. And if there are um, a situation where you don't have any direct connectors, you can call APIs through web connectors as well. So right now what we are doing, we, we will see how we are going to connect with Excel. So I'm just connecting, Excel and I'm uh, picking a sample data from here. So once you pick that sample data, data file in Excel, it is going to give you choice because in Excel file, there might be multiple sheets, there might be multiple tables inside your uh, file. So you have to pick and choose like which table or which sheet you want. So in this case, I have selected these four sheets so if my data is already in proper shape, I simply click on load. But if I think that my data need a little tuning or fine tuning or some corrections uh, inside my data model, then I'll click on transform data. So if I load, my data will be loaded over here in my system. On the right side, you will see that all tables which, are, which, were, which I have selected are loaded with all those fields inside it. So once you connect that particular data, the, the important part is like uh, you need to go through either data transformation or data load. So in this case, because my data is clean, I have not used the transformation feature, but just to show you like if you need a transformation, there is a transform data uh, link available over here. So I'm for, for this example, I'm I'll click on the transform data. Now you'll see the transform data screen. Can you see my screen now? This transformation screen. Okay. Now in this transformation uh, transformation screen, you can apply certain changes to your data. Like for example, I have the sales data, I have the sales staff uh, data available over here. So if I want these names to be converted into capital letters, so what I'll do, I'll simply go to the transform and I'll go to the format and I'll change it to uppercase. So my source data was actually not in the uppercase, but for my report, if I need this data to be transformed into the uppercase, I'll do that. It's not going to do anything to my, this, my source data. And I've applied that transformation on top of it. And on the right side, whatever steps I have performed, it's going to record those steps. Now, for example, I have uh, applied this step over here. And for gender, I'll just simply uh, add column and I'm going to extract over here and I'm going to extract first character. And here, what I'm doing, I'm only selecting the first character. So my gender is coming in M and F. So I'm just giving you an example, like you, if you want to do any kind of transformation on your data, 
that transformation can be done in the transformation screen and you have so many options available to transform your data so currently this is not a detailed course but there are uh, ways uh, whenever you get data from different sources and you need to uh, massage that data and transform that data to, your, to a proper shape uh, Power BI provide every feature to transform and clean that particular data. And if you by mistake applied any step, you can simply go and delete those steps so your data will come back to the original form. It's almost equal to the undo steps which we usually perform. And once you are done, you will go and you will close and apply. And all those changes which you have applied will be applied onto the system. Now I'll come back to the screen again, the Power BI screen. Now, once that data is uploaded, now what we have done right now, we have connected to the data and we have, trans we have learned how to transform that data. Now, Power BI has a very great feature of creating data models. Like if I'm not perfect in database, but Power BI is having a data modeling feature which helps uh, create data model automatically. But the prerequisite for that is like my data is clean and in its proper shape and my naming convention is correct. Like for example, over here I have, um, if I'll expand this a little just to explain you. If you see that in this countries table, there is a column named country code and in the staff, table sales staff table there is a column named country code so because my naming convention is correct so in this case this is an ideal situation that my power bi understand like how it can create a data model so if i'll go and create click my data model icon what will happen like it's going to create that data model automatically so whatever the names i have used like in this case the country code is connected to the sales staff the salesperson id is connected with sales data and the product id is connected with the sales data as well because we have the primary key pid which is connected to the sales data so this connection which is uh, which you can see over here is is, is created automatically but there are cases where probably your names are not correct but you know that this country code is related to this country code so imagine if there are two different names of these columns, but you understand that these are actually connected to each other so you have facility to manually connect these two so because our current example was uh, having proper name so that connection was made automatically and it is showing one too many like in countries there is one country and in the sales staff there can be many countries like one representing one country there can be more many sales person so this these kind of relationship once again what i'm trying to explain that power bi once you get a clean data or you do a perfect transformation that data modeling part is handled by power bi automatically so here we we have seen that how that data modeling is performed in power bi and sometimes if you are, your data model you want some you are not happy with uh, the relationship like one to one and one to many you can go and change it from here to one to one or one to many like this is only uh, required once you are pretty sure that the relationship which is created by power bi is not correct and you want to correct that particular relationship so once again you have full liberty to play with the data models but if you if you are having a very good uh, data files with proper naming conventions so, so that data modeling part will be handled by power bi automatically so you don't have to worry about it so before you create your reports you have to go through all these steps perfectly like from that connectivity from transformation and data modeling once your data modeling part is done then you are ready to start your reporting uh, journey so you have to be pretty sure that you you have done all these steps perfectly and then you can start your uh, visual so i'm just adding a new page over here to start the data visualization part so here you see you have the visualization pane and in this visualization pane you have different 
different tools available or different visuals available. So these are all called visuals. And all these visuals are representing different graphs and charts. And you are not just restricted to these visuals. Microsoft is providing you facility to import visuals from the app store as well. Like if you are not happy with these visuals and if you want to get more visuals, you can get more visuals from Microsoft store as well. And there are so many of them. Some are free, some are paid. So whatever you are seeing over here, this is not end of the world. You can go and get more visuals. And if you have already downloaded few visuals before, you can import from uh, visuals from a file as well. And if you want to remove any downloaded visual, you can use uh, the, these features as well. But currently we will stick to the out of the box visual, which we call out of the box, like when, whichever are coming by default with Power BI, they are more than sufficient and we can utilize them. So there are two major classifications in these um, uh, visual. One is for uh, slices reasons, like you want to slice and dice your data, and other are for the presentation or data visualization reasons. So here I'm going to use these visuals one by one, and you will understand like how we can utilize them. So we have the sales data with us, and we have the quantity, like how many units we have sold for different products. So what I, I'm doing right now, in the very first visual, I'm putting a card visual over here. So this card visual, once this card visual has been uh, dropped on my canvas, I'll simply drag and drop my quantity over here. So once my quantity is dropped over here, it's going to give me the total quantity, like how many units I have sold. I have sold 61 units. And if my data file is having a field name, which is not appropriate, I can go and change it from here and I can rename it like units sold. So I can change the way this text should appear. And because my visual is very uh, black and white sort of visual, if I want to beautify it, I have in the uh, first uh, tab is the field tab. Another one is the format tab. I'm going to, uh, going to format tab. I'm going to go to the data label. I'm changing its color to let's say yellow. And then I'm changing its background color or category color. So I can do everything I want based on my requirement. And I can beautify this as much as I can. So I'll just put it like this. So I have the 61 units sold. And if I want its borders to be curved borders or the different colors, I can do that as well. So this is a very simple example, like how you can beautify your visual. So almost all visual follow the same procedure. So now you will see that I have created a, visual, a simple card visual and I have applied all those formatting features and this card visual is showing me a kind of a summary. So in the same manner, the way you drop your visual and you apply those different fields vary from visual to visual. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to another one, which is a stack bar chart. And here in this time, in this particular chart, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put transaction date in my axis, or you can say over here, I'll put my inside the product, I'll put the category in my axis, and I'll put my quantity in the value. Now it's going to give me the sale, the number of units, the laptops and uh, the printers which, are, which was sold. In this data, it is giving me data related to the laptops and printers. And if I want to apply legend into the brand, what it's, what it's going to do, it's going to give me a kind of a distribution, like which brand, what is the contribution of each brand in this particular vision. So in this one, I have uh, almost 40 uh, units of printers sold. And this is the brother one, this is the Canon, and this is the HP and Kodak, and it's the same manner in the laptop, how many brand distribution are there. So you can, you can see that by simply dragging and dropping, you can simply create a very impressive visual. And once you create these visuals, you can 
transform it to another visual. But the, uh, one rule which you have to remember, like in most of the cases, if you select the next one, like this is the, the horizontal one and this one is the vertical one. So it will transform it well in this case, but if you are selecting any other visual, so probably in that case, that transformation will not be ideal. But in this case, you can select any style you want based on that. And once you go to the formatting part, you can change the legend position as well, where you want to place those legend on the right side, on the left side, or whatever you want, these kind of things you can do. And there are a lot many properties which you can apply. For example, you are not happy with the title it is giving. I'll, I'll give it a different title like distribution of sales with buy. So I can apply different title. I can apply colors and everything on this and I can apply borders and whatever I want. So right now I'm not going into the detail of the formatting one, but just to explain you like you have full liberty of applying all those formatting features over here. So based on this, you can apply the same thing to other visual as well. Like for example, for trends and other reasons you have this line chart and here i'm what i'll do i'm going to drop the dates transition date in the axis and in the sales data i'm putting the transition date in the axis and then i'm applying the quantity to the values so it's going to give me a kind of a trend line, like what is the trend of sale happening? And if I want once again to distribute between the categories, so it, it can give me the two different lines, like what is the uh, trend of the printers and uh, the laptops. And one more thing, like this is, I'm using the normal date, but Power BI is providing you facility to give dates in the hierarchy format. Like currently it is showing you only 2019, but you have this hierarchy form like year, quarter, month. So you can dig down further to like go to the next level of hierarchy. So it's going to give me the quarterly report. Once I'll go down further, it's going to give me the monthly data. And once I go down further, it's, it's going to give me the date, individual day wise data. So you can go and dig down or, or go to the hierarchy wise further so you can drill up and drill down and you can explore further like what what is happening inside so you have a lot many features uh, which you can apply by default and suppose if i go and remove legend so once again my data is going to give me a kind of a trend like how this data is moving from quarter to quarter so you, this is your choice how you you want to apply uh, these kind of changes and you can uh, use that particular selected visual for your uh, particular reasons. So this is a, a very simple example of uh, using all these visuals. Now the other visual which are very common are the table visuals. The table visuals, whenever you want to show your data in a kind of a tabular manner, you can use the table visuals. So there are cases where you want to use your data in tabular form, you want to show your data in tabular form. So you have this table visual with you and you can utilize that table visual to present data in tabular form. And for this, right now what I'm doing, just to explain you, I'll simply drag and drop the columns I need. Now, the thing which I'm trying to explain over here, because in these cases, we were picking data from single table, but here we are going to pick data from multiple tables. Like for example, I, I want the country name over here in the value. So first it will show me the country name. And then I'm going to pick the salesperson name, so like the sales staff. I'm going to pick the salesperson name. And you'll see that I'm picking things from different areas and I'm in incorporating it in my 
now it is going to give me a kind of a summary like for this country this person has sold this much unit this person has sold this much unit so if i want to put the gender as well so i can put gender over here as well so i'll i'll apply these things uh, properly and we'll see that these values are coming and i'm i can adjust the column sizes and i can change the uh, colors and everything the formatting as usual and similar to table we have another visual which is called matrix visual i'll simply place border is uh, not compulsory but i usually use border to separate uh, between uh, different visuals so you can apply the separation between these visuals so you can understand like this visual is starting from this position and another one is from another one and one more important thing like whenever you are selecting a new visual always remember to uncheck any selected visual otherwise that uh, visual uh, appearance will change automatically to the uh, visual you select so here i am selecting the matrix visual and this i am selecting category in the rows and then brand in the rows and then i am selecting uh, like the quantity sold so if you will see over here i have the category uh, mentioned like laptop and uh, printers and once i'll expand it i can expand it in this pivot style and then i can see like what is the distribution and if i want to uh, include any other um, segment for example over here i want uh, like sales person in the column so it's going to give me a kind of a different uh, grid so it's going to give me a, a kind of a distribution like who sold this laptop which person has sold so i have full liberty to create my visuals based on my data and it's kind of a pivot style which is commonly used by the excel people who are uh, very much familiar uh, with pivot table and other related data so if you can see that currently we have based on the simple data we have produced so many visuals and once again if i want to create a pie chart or other charts these kind of charts once again uh, uh, the steps are almost similar so you can apply those steps and you can see that those results are appearing and you can gradually create a very good report based on this so this this uh, one more visual i'm going to show you like okay i'm in the legend i'm going to uh, give brands and then i'm going to give the quantity over here and because i'm using uh, brand names already over here and applying the same color in these cases we usually switch off legend because in one report the colors are already explained so there is no need to show those colors again and what we can do over here in this case because it is uh, showing me only the quantity and percentage i can go and change uh, the uh, label and i am applying the category and percentage of total so instead of giving me numbers now i have a meaningful uh, report in this report it is showing me uh, the uh, name of that particular brand and the percentage it's, it has been uh, the contribution in, of the percentage now the final thing which i am showing you right now is the slices like these are something uh, which uh, are used for creating visuals but one thing which is very important like these visual also act as slices like all of these visuals are connected with each other so if i only want to concentrate on canon so once i'll click on canon the whole report will be reflecting canon only and if i want to see only hp so this the whole report will reflect hp so any kind of selection i am making from any area it's going to reflect the whole report accordingly so i have to uh, select this in this shape but this is not the right way of selecting like selection from your visual is possible but this is not the ideal way of selection so the better way of selection is you use slices 
Now, in this case, I'm using the first slicer as, for example, in my case, I'm using date as the transaction date as my slicer. So once I'll drag transaction date in my field, what will happen is going to give me the whole range of transaction date. So now I can concentrate on certain dates, like I want to concentrate on this day, these dates only, and what is what was the uh, sale or the performance of my sale in these uh, dates. So I can restrict my selection. Based on that, I can analyze my data. And once this is done, I can clean this like clear selection. I can come back to my original form. So I can resize it as uh, I need suggest. So the another visual, uh, the another slicer which I'm going to add right now over here will be Once again, as I said before, you have to uh, make sure that nothing is selected. I'm selecting another slicer. And with this slicer, you have this one. And here I'm putting categories. And in the same manner, I can put another slicer. And I'll put, for example, brands over here. Okay. So once I'll select laptop from here, so everything will be based on the laptop. Means these brands will be restricted to laptop brands only. And once I'll select printers, it will select printers only so I can select printer then I can select only two brands from here by pressing control so I can compare two brands sale as well means whenever you want to investigate further like what is happening in your store which brand is performing well and if you want to compare one or two or three brands you can do it with the help of slices so with the help of slices you can apply different kind of combinations and you can investigate further like how this data can be and arranged and the slicer the way the slicer is appearing you can change it to list you can change it to drop down so instead of taking so much space it will be in the, in the drop down style so you can design as you like like whether you want to have in a drop down style or you have uh, in a list style so this is your choice and the space available in your report based on that you can apply these things and your report is now in very much ready form. The final thing which we usually do, like uh, we are not using any control right now from here, we can simply go over here and we'll put a text box and we can apply the title of this report, like sample report uh, sales data. And I'm going to format it. I'm going to apply any font or size or color, whichever I want and uh, whichever size of the text I want. Based on that, this is going to be completed. And finally, once this report is done, I want to share this report with my peers. Now, this is the part which I'm going to perform right now. Now my report is fairly in, in ready shape and I want to perform a kind of a publishing of this particular report so I can share it. So once I'm done with this report, I'm going to save this report. Once my report is saved, you'll find the publish link available over here. So once you'll publish, you will publish this report to your Power BI account. Now, up till now, whatever you have done, you can do it quite easily in your Power BI desktop. But to publish your report, you have to have a Power BI account and only then you will be able to publish that particular report. So once you will publish, uh, you try to publish, you, it will ask because whenever I'm going to publish, there are certain workspaces I can create, which I'll show you right now, how it, it can be created. You will select that particular workspace where you can publish this particular report. So I'll uh, select this one. So it, it has published this particular report. Now I'll go 
uh, to this particular report and I'll see that whether this report is published perfectly. So I'll share my screen uh, for the browser. Now you will see that the report has been uh, published and you can view this report online. Now this report has been published to my Power BI online service. And the report which we have just created on our desktop is now available on Power BI online. And whenever you want to create uh, or you can say uh, share this particular report, the, the ones you uh, the one you have created, then you have to first publish that report on the Power BI. Now, this interface is different from the interface of the desktop, but in Power BI online or the Power BI service, whichever you, uh, name you want to call it, it has additional facilities of edit report. You can go and edit it like if you, after uploading this particular report, if you want to do some changes over here, you can still do changes over here, but this is not suggested because the source control thing, like you have the source file and your published file might become different. So it's better not to edit it over here, but for, in, for emergency reason or for reasons where you want to do it quickly, you can go and edit this report. Once you click on edit, the interface will be similar to your desktop and you can perform any kind of editing over here as you did in your uh, Power BI desktop. So I'm coming back to the reading view. I just wanted to show you that this is also possible. And once it is done, you have the facility to publish this particular report. Now the publishing uh, report has three options. It's embed, embed in SharePoint online and publish to web. So most secure one is embed. Embed is like those who are allowed to see these reports. You will share this link of this particular report. But if you want to share this with everybody, you will use publish to web. So here I'm doing like embed. And you will see that this URL has been created. And once you share this URL with any person you want him or her to see this particular report, you have to first share this report with that particular person. So you will share this report and you will tell like who is going to view this report. So here you will write the name, the email address of that particular person. So you will select and then you will allow that what that recipient is allowed to do, whether it allows a recipient to share your report, like whether they can share it to further other persons, or they are allowed to build on top of these report, the underlying data sets, and you want to send email notification as well. So all kinds of these things you can apply based on the security you want to implement on your report. So Power BI has the complete life cycle of these particular reports. So now coming back to workspaces, you have different workspaces so you can create as many workspaces because we have already created training and, uh, and other reports. So we have these reports available over here. So we have implemented these, uh, uh, published this report in the training report section. And this was um, uh, available over here and then we have shared it. So just to show you that the link we, which we have pasted, once we paste this particular link over here, this report is going to be visible. So whenever you are uh, printing the, those particular report, this report can be shown. Okay, there are a few questions I'll, I'll just quickly answer. Uh, like, uh, can you show the iframe functionality? Yes, iframe functionality is uh, available once you want to create um, uh, a kind of uh, a web page and you want to paste that in, inside HTML. So here, once you have this embed feature, 
like this embed feature you have this iframe you will simply have to copy paste inside your html and that's it that report will be visible over here but the only thing like because we are we are using the secure embed code in this case it will ask for the user id password like whether you are allowed to uh, see that particular report or not okay so this is the publishing and uh, the sharing part, like how you uh, publish this report and share them. The final thing which we are going to discuss is the dashboard part. Now, once I go to the workspace, it will show me all those reports which I have already created. Now, like this is the report. I have the only one report in my training report workspace, which is a sample training file. So I'll open this report and I'm creating one dashboard for you. Imagine you have two different reports and you want to consolidate items from two individual reports to a dashboard. So you will click on this uh, uh, or you can take mouse over on a particular visual and you can see there is a pin visual option available. So once you go to the pin visual option, it's going to ask where you want to paste because right now we don't have any dashboard ready with us so we will simply create sample dashboard over here and we will pin this visual to that particular dashboard in the same manner if you want to add one more visual into that i'll simply go to this uh, pie chart and once again i'll go and i'll pin this visual now it's going to give me option that i have the sample dashboard with me so I'll pin this. So once I'll go to that particular dashboard, it is going to show me two different visuals on a dashboard. So this is how your dashboard is created. So imagine you have five, seven different reports and you want to consolidate that data into a single dashboard. So you can see a bird eye view of what is happening in different departments. So based on this, you can apply those dashboard. And once again, just like your report you can also share your dashboard like you can share with someone to who can go and see that particular dashboard so this is a, a kind of a very quick journey of the whole life cycle of how uh, power bi works so i'll come back to the qa part like if you people have some questions i'll just quickly check like how, what questions you have Now, uh, someone is asking, like, can you show the iframe functionality, how you can embed a report uh, into a secure web application that data coming from SQL Server? Now, uh, uh, the example is more or less same. Like once you create an iframe uh, content, like if I'm going uh, to, a, uh, to my uh, report and pasting that within my HTML code, it is going to uh, work automatically i'll just uh, quickly show you that part now here i'll go once again to my uh, report i'll go to my embed code And go to my report. I'll go to the embed part. I'll select this iframe and I'll simply create an HTML file. I'll just share my screen with you. Can you see my notepad, all of you? Now here, if you have an HTML page simply, and you have a body, and you have a title, or you can say heading one, this is my report. And you can simply paste that iframe content over here that iframe part will be residing within your page. 
and you will simply close like body in HTML and this will, once you save it as HTML, it will run it. So you can save as a HTML file and you can simply run it. This is all you have to do. Nothing special. Like if you are doing, if you're creating this HTML file in any other uh, system or like any uh, like Visual Studio or anywhere else, this is a simple manner you can put that iframe. You have to simply copy paste wherever you want to place it. Nothing is special. Nothing is going to, uh, nothing is required over here. There is one more question. I'll quickly go. I have a question from a viewer user who are uh, mostly lay personalities or the entire digital important apps if you manage to be highlighted so that it creates me. Now, um, if, if the highlighting part, I'll just uh, explain you like, uh, I'll just share once again, my report part. Uh, I'll come back to my report once again. Now, whenever you are viewing your report, it's not necessary that you will see the whole report. You will see over here, you have different options over here, like spotlight. The spotlight option will, uh, will help you concentrate on the single report. Like if you want to concentrate only on one report and you don't want to see other uh, report as distraction, so you can go to the spotlight uh, uh, and if you can switch off and on spotlight whenever you want and furthermore if you want to concentrate on one report only and you want it as a separate screen so you can go to the focus mode so once you are in a focus mode you are only seeing that particular part and you are not seeing anything else and based on that you can investigate your data further so there are some built-in features which are very cool and you can apply those, but because this is a, a kind of a, a quick walkthrough of all those uh, features which we, which Power BI has. So uh, in this short session, uh, we, we were willing to explain you the whole journey, like how you start and how you complete based on this simple data, but you have so many other options. Now, one important thing, like whenever you, when you are starting your journey, you can have uh, different data sources. So what I'm explaining over here, like you have uh, different data sets and different workspaces. Like I'm showing you some sample reports, which we have already worked on. So if you see over here, uh, like we have um, uh, created some number of sample reports, like uh, on acute care, facilities of New Jersey, which is based on the open data of New Jersey. And in this report, we have uh, sh shown the view the, uh, of the active licenses and the expired licenses. So this is also based on Power BI and this is based on the open data available with the uh, New Jersey open data website. So this report is actually showing you like how many um, facilities are available in which location these facilities are available and you can apply all those things all filters and everything which are available over here you can uh, uh, restrict to certain cities and apply. you have already seen like how these filters are applied in the same manner um, other reports which are available uh, which we can uh, links we, we can share later with you like this is the new york uh, dogs report uh, of the dog licenses report which is also based on the open data. So these are the sample work which we are doing with the open data and you can also explore open data and you can build cool reports on Power BI and based on that you can apply different uh, filters and different uh, features on Power BI as well. So you have uh, different reports. Uh, we have uh, sample reports available, which uh, the links we will share later with you. So you can uh, see these reports and you can understand like how you can take benefit from Power BI by making these reports and you can understand what these open data is telling you. So we have done a lot many uh, reports for our customers as well. So along with that, we are also doing work on, uh, you can say open data. So uh, for those who want to understand like what these open data is telling you. So you have different websites and you can go and you can check those websites and you can grab a website from, uh, data from those particular websites. So this is all from my side. Um, any other question if you have?
Yes, Catherine, you can take it from here. Great, thank you so much. Um, I already have some ideas of some things I wanna try out, but thank you again for your time and for giving us all this great introduction to these data visualization tools. Um, I will follow up with, I have been recording this, so I will follow up with all the attendees with a recording of this video so you can go back and look at it and uh, follow along. But um, thank you all. Thank you to the Alpha Data team. Um, if any of you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them or to me uh, at venturelink at ngit.edu. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Bye, everyone.